Funding for the Trade Best Practice Series is provided by the Benjamin Moore and Company Foundation in partnership with Teach Construction and through the generous support of PDCA sponsors and members. So you've got the paint where it needs to be. You've completed most of the scope of work safely and the work meets expectations. The job is over, right? Time to head out and relax, right? No, there's still a lot to do and this work is still part of the job. It's still part of the scope. This is called the job closeout or site cleanup, depending on your company. There's always a bit of excitement at the end of a job and that's normal, but this is not a time to be impatient or get careless. Remember, work safely. Every company is different and every project is different, so your company will have their own process for closeout. But here are some general ideas. First, be careful during closeout. Don't do something that gets yourself hurt, especially at the end of the day. Remove any tripping hazards, hoses, cords, etc. Of course, there aren't any, are there? Remove debris, sweep and vacuum floors. This isn't just the concern of the lowest person on the totem pole. The success of the job and customer satisfaction depends on it. Your entire team depends on it. Keep in mind you are responsible for personal tools. Be sure you have located and stored all of your personal tools. You know, the tools that are clean and in good condition, hint, hint. You're also responsible for tools or equipment directly assigned to you. See that this equipment is properly cleaned, properly stored, and ready for removal. Ideally, tools and equipment will be cleaned and stored at time of use. The closeout process should be planned, steady, and orderly. Be sure to remove tools and equipment that will no longer be in use. Sequence and closeout is important, just like in painting. After all, you don't want to roll dusty scaffolding over the clean floor that you just uncovered, do you? Move all trash and trash bags to the appropriate location. Generally speaking, work from the top down. So after a good vacuum, floor protection is often the last thing to go. If you're cleaning too much, it might be good to discuss how that can be prevented in the future. A little cleaning is pretty normal, but too much cleaning means there might be a more efficient process. See? We care. Okay, short but sweet. That's all I have to say. Now let's get out there and get our hands dirty. And then clean them, of course to the field. At the end of the day, your supervisor might have a quick huddle to delegate cleanup and close out tasks. Make sure to sweep the floor and vacuum. You can even tag team the cleanup process by sweeping debris into a pile so the other person vacuuming can quickly pick it up. You'll also want to clean and organize the workshop site. This means stacking tape rolls, disposing of any trash that may have been collected throughout the day, and organizing tools. Being organized allows you to find everything quickly the next day. Remember to put away all ladders. Sometimes you could leave your ladders near the workshop site. You'll most likely dispose of your roller with the rest of the trash at the end of the day. But hold on to your roller frames because you can wash and reuse them. Roller frames are an important production tool and should be cleaned thoroughly so they are ready for the next job. Make sure to close all lids before storage. On some commercial projects, especially those you'll be returning to the next day, you might store supplies in an unused storage area. On a residential project, you may need a lockup. Remember to turn off lights, shut doors, and close garage. So who's in charge of the closeout process? Uh, you know, as far as the end of the day, closing out process, and uh, leaving for the end of the day, you know, the crew leaders should uh, initiate a cleanup prior before leaving. You know, generally a good 20 to 15 minutes is about all that's needed sweep up our debris, pick up all of our tools, get them out of the way of traffic. So what kind of systems do you have in place to make sure all that gets completed? So what we'll do is, uh, at the end of the day, who's ever generally getting close to being finished with their project first, we'll send them out on that mission to go ahead and sweep it up, 
gathering tools and then as guys are finishing, you know, it's just a matter of who's getting finished first. Luckily we have a lot of guys here and uh, generally it's just a matter of who gets to it first sometimes. Sometimes I'll do it, sometimes the lower guys will do it. Do you guys have like a final walkthrough though to make sure it's all done? Uh, yeah, we'll do a final walkthrough, uh, you know, not only to ensure that uh, everything's finished for the day, but to make sure we didn't leave any tools behind, you know. Some guys have their cell phone chargers out, they might have a drink laying in a closet somewhere, so we'll walk through all the areas we worked through for the day to make sure that we don't have anything laying around. Some guys take their tools at the end of the day because they need them for the next day on a different job and that's gonna hinder them if they left one of their tools laying on a windowsill somewhere that somebody just happened to walk past. Mm -hmm. So Nick, who is in charge of the closeout process in your company? Typically it's the crew leader. Uh, that would be the guy that ran the whole job. And how does the closeout process work with you guys? The day or two before it's done, we like to get the uh, person who hired us to take a walk around and make sure they're happy with everything. And that way, if there's any issues they see, we can address them while we're still set up. If it's an issue with paint quality, like runs, drips, sags, holidays, which you can read in your PDCA manual about a properly painted surface. Mm. If it's not a properly painted surface, then that's an extra. Change order, AWO, whatever you want to call it. So for instance, on this building, you can't see them, but there's lots of yellow concrete bollards. Those are those things that keep you from running into gas pumps, gas stations. There's a lot of those around here, and then there's some gas piping that they added at the last minute. They're like, hey, give us a price on this stuff. Now that the building looks good, this stuff doesn't, and we want to make sure it looks, it looks nice. So that was a change order for, I don't know, a very small percentage of the job, but still it was extra money and extra time. Okay, after closeout, how can you be sure everything got completed, especially on a big job like this? So what we try to do is we go, we chunk it up into smaller areas and make sure that before we move on to the next area, that it's a properly painted surface and everything looks good and was as the client expected. Trade best practices. Brush cleaning. Properly cleaning a brush is a multi-step process. First, wipe the bristles on the edge of the paint can to remove as much paint as possible. Then, work the brush under warm, running water to loosen up the inside of the brush. A brush comb makes short work of this. It's a tool you'll definitely want to have nearby. It breaks up paint holding bristles together. Gently work the bristles against themselves side to side. A soft brass bristle brush helps to lift dried paint up near the ferrule. But be gentle here, you don't want to damage any of that tipping and flagging we talked about, right? An orange or pumice type hand cleaner does an excellent job removing the last invisible film of paint from the bristles. It also softens the bristles to factory new condition. A brush spinner is the best way to quickly remove water. Finally, use the brush keeper that the brush came in, you kept that didn't you, to protect the brush as it dries. Roller cover disposal. Removing a professional roller cover is easy. Just bam, one tap removal. My name is Brian Murray. I'm a superintendent for SPI. Um, started off in the industry when I was 17 years old, um, just out of high school. Started off as a track home painter, residential. Um, worked there for about, I don't know, five, six years um, on that the residential side of the painting. And then got into repaints of warehouses and kind of trickled into the, the commercial side of things. Got with SPI, which I've been with them for five years now. Um, turned out to be a really good match with me. Um, started off as a foreman with them. Ran a couple big projects and then just kind of worked my way up from there. Just really took pride in my work and just enjoyed myself and enjoyed what I do. Next up, business. I'm back! What year is it? 